So tonight we're going to talk about tactical fouls. Um, this is a slide deck from the most recent um, instruction from FIFA on tactical fouls. So we're going to go over just a couple of discussion points, uh, some considerations, etc. And then we will look at some clips. I will use the poll feature tonight to have you give me your opinion on what you think some of these uh, tactical fouls might be. And we'll discuss them. So first of all, just considerations from FIFA. Um, we're going to review this quickly because at the regional level, we should be able to, to recount this stuff pretty quickly. Um, but tonight, we're going to focus on a lot the difference between uh, SPA, or stopping a promising attack, and dog so denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Uh, I think we all know what both of those are, but just to go through quickly, um, for either of them to be uh, present, we need to have control of the balls. The attacking player needs to have either control of the ball or the clear possibility to control the ball. So they don't necessarily have to have it in their possession, but it needs to be obvious that if it's not in their possession, it was about to be and that nobody else could have possibly gotten there before they did. So either control of the ball or the clear and obvious uh, ability or possibility to control the ball. Defenders and attackers, so this is where we're looking at numerical advantage, uh, but both how many of them are there and where are they? Uh, that's going to be a, a, a focus for us tonight as well when we look at some of the clips that we've selected. Uh, so how many of them are there? Do the defenders uh, outnumber the attackers or do the attackers outnumber the defenders? And then if there are defenders involved, where are they? What proximity to um, the attackers are they? And are they between the goal or are they between, uh, are they behind the attacker uh, and trying to catch up? So those are things we need to think about. What distance to goal are they? Uh, that's going to be a big factor for stopping a promising attack versus dog. So if it's uh, just outside the penalty area or somewhere close to it, then we're going to think about dog. So if it's farther out towards midfield, then we're going to be thinking about stopping a promising attack. Uh, but again, that might be determined by the number of defenders and their proximity to the attacker. So all of these things sort of play in together, and you'll see as we go through some of the videos. And then, uh, obviously, the direction of play. So the big thing for dog so, if we're trying to decide between spa and dog so, for dog so, we need all of these conditions to be present. So the, the control of the ball, the, the, the number of attackers versus the number of defenders, the distance to the goal and the direction, all of these things need to be present for there to be dog. So if we are missing any one of these four considerations, or if one of them is even remotely in doubt, then we want to lean more towards spa than we do dog. So. And then lastly, again, as of the law changes a couple years ago, we're no longer looking to uh, triple penalize uh, players who commit a dog so foul inside the penalty area. So if we have dog so inside the penalty area, we can now have dog so yellow and dog so red. So denying a goal scoring opportunity can exist in the penalty area, but if a player has made an attempt to play the ball and instead commits a foul, we can have dog so yellow so that we're not sending them off. The penalty kick and the yellow card FIFA has considered to be sufficient punishment when someone is legitimately trying to play the ball and just mistimes it. And we'll see a couple examples of that today. So again, I've gone through this quickly, but I would expect everybody on this call to be familiar with this. Are there any questions about these considerations? Anything that's not clear? Anything I'm leaving out before we jump right into the video analysis? Give you just a second if you want. And obviously, as most of you are familiar, you can use the Q&A, excuse me, not the Q&A, the chat feature if you would like to, uh, to ask questions. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and take us right into video clips then. And I'm going to start um, with number two here. And again, I will play it a couple of times, and then we will launch a poll, and you can tell me what you think. All right, we'll watch it one more time here. 
And as usual, I will pause it at the moment of truth that we can make a decision. All right. So that's our moment. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll here and let's see what you think. Lots of options to choose from, but we have to be able to understand why we're making decisions. So the, que the answers will always be the same for all of the polls that we're using tonight. So get familiar with them now and we'll be good to go moving forward. few more seconds. Let's have everybody vote here if you have a second. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and I'll show you the results. So 88% of you say this is a direct free kick and a yellow card. You are correct. The reason for this, if we look at the considerations, first of all, uh, and most prominently is the number of attackers versus the number of defenders. Here we have three attacking players in yellow against two. This is definitely a promising attack, mostly just because of the, the numerical advantage here. This yellow player has clear possession of the ball, which is one of the considerations we talked about. The direction is on to goal, and the distance, one would say it's a little far out, but definitely still a promising attack here. So remember, for denying goal scoring opportunity, we need to have all four of the considerations present. For SPA, we just have to have more of them present than not. And this is definitely a scenario where we've got at least three of the considerations, and I would argue probably all four in place. And so this is a stopping a promising attack. Any questions from the to a couple folks who didn't think a card was necessary here before we move on? Okay. Then our next clip. So there's our foul. And there's our moment of truth. So again, I will launch the same poll. And let's see what everybody thinks about this one. A few more seconds. All right. So again, most of us think this is a yellow card. A few more people this time say no card. So again, let's think about the considerations. We have clear possession of the ball. Granted, yes, he puts it out in front of him, but this is a scenario where we would expect this yellow player, were he not fouled here, to have the possibility of getting the ball back. It's a clear possibility. He's clearly in possession of this ball, were it not for the foul. His direction is towards goal, so that's a positive direction, not moving negative, not with his back to goal. And we've got a numerical advantage here in that he's 1v1. And so anytime an attacker is going 1v1, we want to consider that somewhat promising because he's just got one more player to beat. Now, if there are two defenders back, three defenders back, then no, we're probably not thinking a yellow card there because the promising attack is diminishing by the, the number of defenders back. But in this case, we've just got the one defender the one attacker, clear space, clear uh, direction towards goal, clear possession of the ball. We want to consider this a promising attack. Again, the only thing that's not present in this one is perhaps the distance to goal. Yes, he is at midfield, uh, and that is a factor. But again, we've got three of the four possibilities here, uh, or excuse me, three of the four considerations present. That definitely leans us more towards stopping a promising attack. So this one, we would also want a yellow card. Any questions on that clip? All right, then the next one. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we're going to play that one again. I'll give you a nice detailed replay here in a minute, but I just want you to see the play develop. Okay. They went to VAR for fun with this one, but this is the replay that we want you to see here. Comes up just short of the ball. And we have a tripping foul. Now, obviously, with VAR, they're looking at this just to make sure he doesn't touch the ball because that might change the decision. We're not going to have that in our day-to-day -day reality. So what we really want to look at here for our decision is let's assume this is a foul. Game it would expect a foul here. So for this foul, let's see what decision we want to make here. So I'll go ahead and launch the poll again, and let's see what your answers are. few more seconds. All right, so spotty results on this one. So we're going to analyze this one a little bit more. So first of all, we've got three people who chose direct free kick. Please remember that if a foul happens inside the penalty area, it's a PK, not a direct free kick. So we have to be careful with our analyses here. This should be a PK, not a direct free kick. And then we've got a handful of folks here uh, who are suggesting a yellow card for SPA. Um, this is a clear example of denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. All four considerations are present. There is literally nobody between the attacking player and the goal when this foul occurs. So this is definitely dog so. So whether you go yellow card or red card, the reason for this is going to be for dog so. Now we get into the analysis of is this a yellow card or a red card? And remember we talked about uh, in the considerations a moment ago, and in fact I will go back to them so that we can see, it's this last one. Inside the penalty area, if there is an attempt to play the ball, we downgrade that penalty. And so because this defender has made an attempt to play the ball, and in fact, VAR had to look at a number of times to see if he actually nicked the ball or not. He didn't, so it's a foul. But because he has made an attempt to play the ball, we only want to show a yellow card here. So this is a yellow card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity because it's inside the penalty area and we have issued a penalty kick. So if we show a penalty kick for denying an obvious goal scoring foul, and the player was attempting to, to play the ball, we only show yellow card. Now, had this been an upper body foul, a push, a pull, a hold, those kinds of things, those are considered not to have been making an attempt to play the ball, and then we would send the player off for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. But because this player has made an attempt to play the ball, we want to have a yellow card here, not a red card. So for the 61% of you that say PK yellow, well done. I'm guessing the uh, couple of you who said uh, direct free kick yellow also congratulations. So we don't want to have a red card here. That's the, the key point because this player has made an attempt to play the ball and we have issued a penalty kick. Any questions on that analysis? Does the difference here, yellow card versus red card, make sense for folks? Question here, played the ball but got the player. Unfortunately, no, this, this, in this case, the player, the defending player did not touch the ball. Um, so because he didn't touch the ball, this is going to be a PK. Had he nicked that ball away and then made contact with the attacker, we would have no foul. And again, when you look in the, at the VAR, the reason they spent so much time looking at this replay was because they were making sure that he hadn't touched the ball. 
and it's hard to find the right angle, but it's that side angle that we looked at, the very, very, uh, this one here, where you can see he never gets the ball. He gets the player, not the ball, and we can tell this by the ball not changing direction. So there's a couple of additional things I want to talk about with this clip beyond just whether or not it's yellow card or red card. We, we talked about all the considerations. We talked about yellow card being the accurate decision. Um, this is an interesting clip for us for a teamwork perspective because this play sort of develops out of nowhere. The referee is in a decent position here with the white team attacking or, or having possession of the ball. And then this play breaks down very quickly and suddenly we're through. And so ARs, you need to be aware of situations like these where the referee is in a seriously compromised position here and is not going to have adequate time to get caught up and to help make this decision. So as difficult as a decision as this is because of how close the, the defending player gets to the ball, this is a scenario where we might want to see assistant referees uh, getting involved in this decision because, again, the referee is going to be back probably a good 40 to 45 yards, but importantly is going to be trailing it from directly behind and is not able to see the nature of this contact. Um, now, we, this is a really challenging clip because as we can see from this stoppage point, the AR is also not really able to see the point and mode of contact. So as we've talked in previous webinars about AR involvement, we really need ARs to have a clear view of all of the decision-making components. You should have heard me talk about this concept before, uh, the difference between a clear view of an incident versus a clear view of all the decision-making components. Uh, the AR in this scenario can definitely see the incident. He can see that there are two players, he can see that one of them lunges for the ball, and he can see that one of them falls down but the AR is not able to see the decision-making components. What is the mode of contact? What is the point of contact? The AR cannot see if this toe touches the ball or not. And so it makes it that much more difficult for the AR to get involved. But what the AR can see is the ball. And so when you find yourself in these moments where you're trying to piece together potentially whether a foul happened or not, one thing you can focus your attention on if you can't get a clear view of the decision-making components is look at the ball. And if the ball does a weird change of direction, if it's rolling one way and then bounces or spins a different way that's unexpected, that might mean that that defending player actually got a toe onto that ball. So the ball is rolling in this scenario if we watch it cleanly. The ball is rolling, and if that defender gets a touch to it at the speed that he's going, that ball's going to bounce forward a little bit unexpectedly because the attacking player has not put a touch on the ball again. And so if you're watching the ball and you see it jut forward without the attacking player putting a foot to it, that might be a hint that the defending player actually got a toe onto that ball. So just a little trick when you're looking at difficult scenarios like this, if you can't necessarily get the right angle, Focus your attention on the ball and see if the ball moves at all before the attacking player reacts to whatever physical contact he takes. This is a really, really difficult scenario because of the referee getting caught in the angle of view for the AR, but the two of them together are able to piece it together that this is a foul and needs to be a yellow card. Any questions on any of that further discussion? Okay. We'll move us along to the next one then. All right, watch it one more time. And last time, and I'll freeze it at the moment of truth. So there is our foul. Let's see what we have here. Again, pay close attention to what the restart is. Is it a PK or a direct free kick?
Couple more seconds. All right. So again, a little bit of, uh, over the, or, uh, all over the map with this one as well. 60% of us correctly hear, say, PK, yellow card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. So again, we have to, I think, with, based on the, what we saw with the last clip and with this clip, we need to make sure we're very clear about what denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity is. So all four considerations we've discussed are present. The attacker is 1v1 with the goalkeeper. That is a clear denying obvious goal scoring situation. And so the next thing we have to decide then is if this is a foul and it's denying goal scoring opportunity, is this player making an attempt to play the ball? In this case, the answer is, is clearly yes. He has made a tackle onto the ball. He has just mistimed it and brings the attacker down. So with the defender making attempt to play the ball, the ball is in playing distance here. He brings the player down. This needs to be a yellow card for denying goal scoring opportunity. So again, remember for the three of you who suggested a red card is an accurate decision here. Um, we have denying goal scoring opportunity that is correct. But if we determine that the ball is in playing distance and a player makes an attempt to play the ball, which in this case the player has, then we want to go with yellow card, not red card. We only want to give red card in the penalty area for denying goal scoring opportunity when there is not an attempt to play the ball. Usually that's going to be pushing, pulling, holding, some sort of upper body foul more often than not. It is possible if a player is not making any attempt to play the ball and just kick somebody's heels to bring them to ground, that's not an attempt to play the ball, so we can send them off for that. But the, the large majority of red cards for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity with the penalty kick that we see, we want to have uh, upper body fouls be the only thing we give red card here. So a couple of comments here. The video feed was very jerky. I understand that some of us have, have slower connection than others, um, but I'm giving you a freeze frame here at the moment of the foul. And so that should be able to give you the information that you need to make the decision. And then a second thing here, I thought the defender just tackled the attacker and didn't try to play the ball. It's hard for us to read intention. And so it's, it's important that we don't think about what we thought the intention of the defender was. And instead, we just analyze what we can see. The ball is in playing distance. It's only a couple of feet from the attacker when he makes the challenge. He's gone into ground and has mistimed it, whether he did it deliberately or not. Um, we don't know, but we have to make sure we're not really thinking about intent when we're making these decisions because that's going to get us in trouble. So with this scenario, the ball is in playing distance. The defender has gone to ground where the ball is to try to win it and has mistimed it, and we have a penalty kick instead. Now, if the ball is bouncing up by the head and the defender goes into the ground with the feet, then, yeah, we can probably piece together that he's not really trying to play the ball. But in this scenario, the ball's on the ground. It's close to where the defender is going. I don't think we want to read into it any more beyond that. Let's just use the benefit of the doubt here and some common sense to say if the ball's on the ground and the tackle comes in on the ground, that's probably an attempt to play the ball. Any additional questions on that clip before we move on? Okay, and just to reiterate, when we're, when we're talking about um, tactical fouls, spa, dog, so those kinds of things, the moment of truth, uh, the moment where we have the foul, the decision-making moment is really the important part of this. We're going to always assume that when we're looking at these, these are all fouls. We don't have to decide if it's a foul or not. We're going to assume it's a foul. So it's really the moment of truth that you need to think about. Where has the foul happened and what are the considerations around it? All right, next one. We'll look at it one more time. All right, and then I'll give you a freeze frame at the moment of truth. So you can see here, Harry Kane gets the ball, very good attacker. Defender here, defender here, defender here. These are the only three defenders back. And we have a foul there. So that is the moment of truth. 
no more defenders back here, just this defender, possibly this, possibly this. So we will launch the poll. And let's see what we have here. Couple more seconds. All right, and I'll show the results here. So again, we're sort of split down the middle on this one. And I'll be honest, this is a bit of a challenging clip. Um, and so we'll talk through the considerations here. Um, so the first one is, does he have possession of the ball? Most definitely has possession of the ball. Let's remind ourselves what those uh, considerations are. We have defenders and attackers, number and location, distance to goal, and direction. So with this clip, the direction to goal is definitely present. The number of defenders, we have this one, the only one back. We have a defender here who's about even, but is pretty far out of the play. And we have this guy. And then the last one we have to think about, and really which is the, the crux of this clip, is the distance to goal here. The, the attacker is a good 60 yards from goal. And because of that distance, because it's not an obvious goal scoring opportunity, we want to go with yellow card for stopping a promising attack here. So the big consideration in this clip is the distance from the goal. It's very speculative whether or not this, this attacker would have been able to dribble another 50 yards without somebody catching up to him before he puts a shot on goal. It's not an obvious goal scoring opportunity. It's a very promising attack. The last defender here has brought him down. But when you look at the way that this play develops, Luka Modric here, who is also a quite speedy player, is also recovering at the moment of the foul and is just a few yards away. And so there's, it's, it's speculative about whether or not this defender could have caught up to Harry Kane while he's running. But because it's not obvious, and because of the distance from the goal, that's what makes it not obvious. We don't want to have a red card here. We want to go with a yellow card for stopping a promising attack. This is definitely promising, but because the distance is so far, we can't say it's an obvious goal-scoring opportunity because we don't know who would have caught up with this player or not. Any questions on that analysis? This is one where distance is an important one. All right, then I'll move us on to our next one. Oops, we had a question here pop up. All right. Next one here, we're gonna introduce a new concept with this one. One more time. And then I'll give you the moment of truth. Fouls him right there. All right, so take a look at that. Look at, think about your considerations. And then I will launch the poll and let's see where we go. Few more seconds.
All right. Lots of discussion on this one I'm anticipating. So here are the results. So there's a few things I want to go through here. Um, I want to start with the folks, with the two folks who had direct free kick yellow card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Um, I want to clarify something because I, I realize I didn't uh, cover this when we were talking about the difference between dog so yellow and dog so red. You can only have dog so yellow if you've awarded a penalty kick. The dog so yellow, so if you have denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity, that is a red card unless you have issued a penalty kick in a scenario where a player is challenged for the ball. So you can't have a dog so yellow outside the penalty area. We only downgrade dog so to a yellow card because we've issued a penalty kick. So I apologize for not being more clear on that one earlier. We have one person who suggested PK red card. As you can tell, this foul clearly happens outside the penalty area, and so a PK is not possible. And so really what we want to be discussing in this clip is do we have a direct free kick for a red card denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity because it has happened outside the penalty area, or do we have a direct free kick yellow card for stopping a promising attack? So again, if we go through the considerations, and I'm going to bring those up one more time for us, we have number of defenders. Whoops. We have number of defenders. There's one back that's really a part of this, but the attacking player is in behind him. So this looks like a dog so scenario for us. So the number of defenders really isn't uh, a factor. Uh, so we have, sorry, excuse me, we have uh, no defenders back basically. So that's, that would seem to indicate dog so. We have distance to goal is very close. We have direction. The only thing we don't have here is control. And this is the concept, and I said before I started the video, I wanted to introduce a new concept to you. It's the idea of whether or not the ball is in control when it's in the air. And so if the ball is in the air, we don't know for sure whether or not this player is going to be able to control it or possess it clearly to give us that final consideration for dog. So, so anytime you have a foul where the ball is still in the air, the fact that it's in the air and not yet being possessed by the attacker is what would downgrade us to giving a yellow card for spa here and not a red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. So anytime the ball's in the air, we need to consider that not clear possession because there's still a lot of work for the attacker to do to gain clear possession. And as you can see, if you watch this play uh, in real speed, the ball has been sent at a good pace over the top, and it's going to take a pretty decent touch from this player to be able to bring it down and before he comes under pressure from the defender, put a shot on goal. Because of that, it's not an obvious goal scoring opportunity because possession is not clear and obvious. So in this scenario, because the ball is still in the air when the foul has occurred, we want to consider that not to be in possession of the ball, which means all four of the uh, considerations have not been met, which means we want to give a yellow card for stopping a promising attack. Any questions on that idea of the ball being in the air and the impact that it has on the considerations between yellow card for spa and red card for dog so? Okay. So that's the, the big learning moment on this clip, is that if the ball's up in the air, we're probably gonna be thinking spa before we think dog so because of the lack of possession. All right, we've got four more I wanna look through here. All right, that's the first one. We'll watch it one more time. And then we will have a pause on the moment of truth. All right. Let's see what you got.
few more seconds. All right, just as I expected, we are pretty much right down the middle on this one. So this is a really difficult clip and it's a difficult and, and a deceiving situation for a referee. So the concept I want to introduce here is the idea when we're making tactical foul decisions, we need to think about what would have happened if we remove this player who committed the foul from the scenario. So in this clip, as we can see, he's taking him on, he pushes the ball past him. And at this moment, the player commits a foul. What's challenging about this clip is the referee is gonna process the foul, just like we did when we watched it for the first time. And then once they've processed the foul, they're going to scan the field to see if the components for spa or dog so are present. Now the challenge with that is by the time the referee processes and then scans the field, the difference between this and this is really important. So if this player right here doesn't trip that attacker, this attacker's got six or seven yards free and clear of this defender, goes 1v1 on to goal, highly unlikely this player catches him because of how close to goal he is before he puts a shot on goal. So because of that, we want to have a direct free kick and a red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. But again, this is difficult because the process that we teach referees is see the foul and then scan the field to see what components of spa and dog so are present. If the referee goes through that process, the time it takes their brain to do that is the difference between here where the foul happens, and again, this is a clear dog so scenario, and here where a defender is even with him now and we trick ourselves into thinking that this is spa and in fact in this game the referee issues a yellow card here for spa so the way that we want to teach referees and for those of us who are still referees on the call the way we want to think about this and make sure that we get this right is to actually evaluate the situation before the foul even happens and so in this scenario once this attacker plays the ball through we have to be thinking right now if this defender commits a foul here, we've got denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity in a red card. We have to have that in our head before the foul actually happens. That's how we're going to know that we can make that decision accurately. Because again, with this scenario, if we wait until after the foul, we're going to get deceived because this defender is going to be able to catch up and close that distance. And so at this moment, if the referee is thinking, okay, I've got a dog so scenario here. If this defender attacks this attacker and nothing else changes, I have to give a red card here. And he's thinking that the whole time. So that as soon as that foul happens, he knows he was in on goal. This player wasn't going to catch up and we need to give a red card. Mark, a question here. Is this 1v1 versus the goalkeeper? That is correct. If this there's a goalkeeper back. If this defender doesn't commit that foul, this attacker is going 1v1 with the goalkeeper. And that is 100% a dog so scenario. So again, the learning point, and particularly for those of you that are out there coaching referees, the concept that we want to introduce here is we need to be evaluating situations as they develop, not after they already happen. Because this one, and then we'll see what the next clip uh, what the difference can mean for us. We're going to miss what should be a red card here because we're not thinking right now, this guy's 1v1. If this defender fouls him, I have to give red. And instead, we're thinking, okay, okay, nothing, nothing. Oh, that's a foul. But look, there's a defender back, so no problem. So the answer from FIFA on this one is we want a direct free kick and a red card because at the moment the foul happens right here, this player is clearly in on goal. This player is likely not to catch up, which means this is 1v1 with the goalkeeper. 
denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Any questions on that analysis or that concept of, of reading the play before the foul happens to know what kind of scenario you're in? All right, then I wanna go on to the next one to sort of counter that with this clip. Again, think about the same ideas though. Watch it one more time. And one more time. So that is our moment of truth. That is when the foul has happened. And I will launch the poll. Few more seconds. All right. And yeah, I think we got the idea here. So the difference between the last clip that we looked at and this clip is that the moment of truth, when this foul happens, I'm sorry, my thing is in the way there. When the, when the moment that this foul happens, there are two defenders immediately next to the play. With the last clip that we looked at, there was one defender who committed the foul, and the other defender who was close by and involved was a good five, six, seven yards away and trailing the play. Whereas with this clip, there's two defenders, and one of them can probably get in here and get in the way. So on this one, we want to think about a SPA yellow card direct free kick as the accurate answer for this clip. Again, the difference being, and I'll pull up the other one to show us an example here. At the moment of truth on this foul, oops, is this the right one? At the moment of truth, look at the difference. This player is clearly far beyond this player. If we remove this guy from the equation, if he doesn't commit that foul, this player is in no position to catch up. But if you contrast that with this player, if this player doesn't commit the foul, this guy is actually a little bit deeper and still has a chance to get over here. That is the key difference with this clip versus the last clip is the second defender is also in pretty close proximity to the ball. There's a question about whether or not he can get there, which means this, that takes it from being a dog so to a spa. Any questions on the difference between those? We add three yards versus six yards for pros. Again, it's not three versus six we want to think about. It's proximity to the play. So the last one, the guy was on the, on the other example we looked at, this player is so far behind and trailing that there's no way he's going to be able to catch up. If we watch this one in real speed, you'll see that this player over here is actually running at full speed and is likely going to close that distance down and force this player out wide. There's just enough question in there to make it not obvious that we want to lean towards SPA. But the big difference between the two is the fact that at the moment the foul happens, right here, there are two players equidistant to this, two players who can get involved. If we remove this player, there's a good chance that this player, the other attack, or excuse me, the other defender on the right can still get involved in this play. That's the difference of what makes it from a red card to a yellow card. We had a question here, to what extent is it appropriate for the referee to include knowledge of the attacker and defender's speed and skill from prior knowledge or more likely in our game's observation during the match in deciding between spa and dog so? 
absolutely appropriate to do that. Um, if this guy is as speedy as all get out and this guy's really, really slow, then we know he's probably not going to have a chance to catch up. But as we saw as this play developed, look at how far away he is when it starts and look at how much distance he closes along the way. He's clearly closing that distance down. And so I think we can factor that in. So absolutely, we can think about the skill set and the ability and the physical uh, potential of the players when evaluating whether or not SPA or DOGSO exists. That's a good question. Any other questions? Oops, sorry about that. Any other questions on this clip or the difference between this one and the last one that we looked at? Okay. Mark, if you have a question, go ahead and type it into the chat or to the Q&A. I'll give you a second if you do. All right, we're going to pull up. We've got two more, so we will end on time. So not that it's confused, because I was confused the first one. I thought it was this decision the first time I watched it and said, really? Now, that's clearly not SPA, but okay. But it's not that foul. It's he puts the ball down. And then he laces a 70-yard ball. And then we have the foul. So again, one more time. And then I'll give you the moment of truth. We're going to assume that's a foul. So there's the moment of the foul. I'll go ahead and launch the poll. Couple more seconds. All right. So based on the discussion that we had on the last couple, I asked you to think about the idea of removing a defender, the defender who commits the foul from the equation. So Mbappe brings the ball down. He's got clear possession here. And he takes a touch to go forward to goal, and this player fouls him. So if we remove this player and the foul from the equation, this defender and this defender are the only two players back. Otherwise, Mbappe has a 1v1 with the goalkeeper from the middle of the penalty area. What is the likelihood on this scenario that either this defender or this defender gets to the other side of the ball? and puts themselves in a position to block the shot that is going to come on the very next touch from Mbappe. What is the likelihood? So I want to use the raise your hand icon here. If you think it's likely that these defenders can get between the ball and the goal before Mbappe takes a shot on his next touch, click the raise your hand icon. zero people raised their hand. So if that's the case, how can this be a yellow card when this player has clearly denied an obvious goal scoring opportunity? So again, 1v1 with the goalkeeper. This is a clear dog so. Because these two players are not able to get involved in this play before the shot is going to happen. So again, we really have to think about at the moment the foul happens, remove that player who committed the foul from the equation. 
He's brought it down to his feet. He takes a touch on goal, and he gets fouled. His next shot is going to be a shot on goal, or excuse me, his next touch is going to be a shot on goal from the inside in the middle of the penalty area. Very obvious goal scoring opportunity. And because these two players don't have a chance of getting themselves between the attacker and the goal, that means all four components are present. Clear possession, distance to goal is quite close, direction is very clear, and the numerical advantage is very clear. So we have a denying goal scoring opportunity and red card on this clip because these two defenders have no chance of getting back and getting involved here. Last thing, this is a good clip for AR involvement because the referee is going to need some help given the speed of Mbappe and the fact that he's nowhere near this play. As you can see, he's back here running as fast as he can. And he goes down inside the penalty area. That's a tough one. And so if we go forward a little bit, I think we get a good example. Yeah, you can see the foul happens right there, clearly outside. So it's not inside. It's not a PK. Clearly outside. And if you notice, if you watch this in real time, the referee immediately when he calls this foul is pointing to the ground on the outside. That's because the AR is coming in over the comm saying outside, outside, outside right away. Watch the referee here. Blows the whistle and immediately says it's right here on the ground because the assistant referee has come in over the comms proactively to tell him it's outside, it's outside, it's outside. So a very, very nice job here. So again, the big takeaway from this one, guys, is when the foul happens, we have to recognize whether or not the other defenders, if they are somewhat close to the play, can actually get involved in the play before the goal is scored. And in this case, it's an obvious no. Last clip. And one of my personal all-time favorites. Now, I'm going to be mean to you, and I'm going to be intentionally mean to you, because I know your video is probably a little bit jerky. That's all you get to see. And I remember I'm being mean on purpose. Let's see your answer here. I think some of you have seen this clip before. <laughs> Few more seconds. All right. The 10 of you who said direct free kick red card have probably seen this clip before, I'm guessing. So this is a really tough clip. Because if we show the replay here, you can see the referee is in a very, very compromised position. He runs to the center of the field, as you can see there on the bottom. He's running towards the center. And so at the moment the foul happens, he's looking directly through the back and he's not really able to tell where it happens. It's hard for the referee trailing on this one to be able to see where in all of this that foul actually happens. And so this referee in this game starts to issue a penalty kick, as many referees would, because it looks like the guy goes to ground eight yards from goal. Looks like a penalty kick. The challenge is 
there was the push in the back right there that put the defender off. That's the last time the, or excuse me, put the attacker off. This little push in the back is actually the last time the defender touches the attacker. But the attacker stumbles, stumbles, and goes to ground six yards from goal. Again, another example you can see here, just as the replay starts. He gets nudged in the back just outside the penalty area, which makes this a foul outside the penalty area, direct free kick. So we're not going to issue a penalty kick here. Now, the last replay shows us, I believe, the referee. impossible to see what this decision was. So the learning moment for this one is referees. As soon as this ball gets played through, you need to recognize again this concept we were talking about. This needs to be read right away as a 1v1 opportunity. This yellow player is going to goal 1v1. That automatically makes us think about dog so. But we need to think as referees if an attacker is out in front of a defender and the defender is trailing the attacker, what kind of fouls are we gonna see if there's a foul at all? It's gonna be a push in the back, it's gonna be a clip of the heels, it's gonna be a hold of some kind. It's all going to be between the two players. And so it's crucial for us to great, create an angle of view for ourselves so we can see between those two players. So you have to recognize this ball is going right up the middle of the field, and ideally, the referee would run in this direction and would get over into this area so that he can see through the players. But instead, he tries to stay in his diagonal and ends up directly in line, can't see a thing, has no idea if a foul has actually occurred or not. So when you find yourself in this kind of a scenario out on the field where you're trailing a play like this directly behind it, take a shortcut and come over here. There's nothing wrong with viewing this from this angle so that you can very, very clearly see the hand in the back that you need to see to make this decision. Because that little hand right there is what the referee needed to be able to see. And it's really hard for the referee to see it. However, if he has gone to the right of, this, of the two players, he can see that right there clear as day, hand in the back, pushes him forward, and forces him to ground. So a great teamwork clip. AR saves the day for the referee by telling him it is outside. And it's worth noting that whether it's inside or outside, if we award a PK here, this is still an upper body foul. This is not an attempt to play the ball. So either way, if it's inside or outside, this is going to be a red card because the player has not made an attempt to play the ball. So if we do decide that this happens inside the penalty area, we are still going to show red because the player has not made an attempt to play the ball and this is denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Any questions on that last clip? Any questions on anything we've reviewed tonight? All right, then, as always, I thank you for joining me this evening. I wish you a very, very happy holiday. I hope everybody has a good time. Um, I'm very excited to say that I am leaving on Saturday to go to Paris and London for two weeks. So I hope everybody has as much fun as I do over the holidays, and we look forward to seeing you in the new year. Have a good night, everybody.